here, Cav, is where the main functionality in the Ultra software lies. This is where we actually go through and set the key. We adjust the key. Um, there's a bunch of different sliders. I want to go through and cover all what, what these different sliders do. To start with, we're going to load up a sample file here. If you're following along at home, what I'd like for you to do to start with, clear out what you're working on, do a new session. So go up to File and choose New Session. And we're going to load up a clip that comes included with the Ultra software. This is called Suzy Tight in Wind. So in your Browse tab, you should be able to go to the Sample Clips directory and just drag and drop this clip into the Input Clip tab. We'll also go through and drag and drop in a background while we're at it. Go to the Backgrounds tab and choose the file called Clouds02 that again comes included with your Ultra software. Now in the Keyer tab, there's actually a couple of different ways of setting up the key. The first method is the set key method, and this is the easiest to use, but you need to do a little bit of pre-planning while you're shooting. Uh, make sure and shoot at least one frame of just the green screen by itself. Have your talent duck down out of the way or walk off the green screen. And what this will give you is it gives you a reference frame. You can scrub your clip to that reference frame. And then there's one button you need to set, and this will automatically set the key to whatever color you're keying on. It will also automatically set up for wrinkles, for lighting hotspots in the key. So just by hitting the set key button, it's now set the key for me. Now if you don't have a reference frame of just the green screen, you can also use another method. I'll disable the key for a second here. And up in the input preview monitor, you can roll your mouse up over that and you'll see that it turns into a crosshair. And this gives me the ability to click on different sections of the image. Typically you want to add somewhere between 1 and 10 key points. You can actually have up to 64. I've never seen a, a green screen that was so bad I needed 64 key points to key it out. Usually what you want to look for are shadowy areas. You want to look for brighter areas. You also want to click at least once on just the green area where you have kind of a median green color. You might also want to click on any wrinkles that appear on your green screen and just put two or three key points along the wrinkle. This tells Ultra to uh, pay special attention to that particular area. Once you've set your key points, you can hit the Apply Points button and Ultra will key your image based on your points. You can also go back and add additional points just by going back to the input monitor and clicking on different areas where you might need a little bit extra attention. And when you click Apply Points, it's going to add those points to your key. If you need to start over with key points, just click the Clear Points button, and then that will clear off all your points and you can start over. Ultra can key on any color. Um, in fact, it doesn't even really have to be blue or green. Um, those are still the best colors to key off of if you're trying to key a human subject. But let's say you have something that, like, you have a robot that you're trying to key. Maybe a fluorescent orange background would actually key better. Now, once you set your key using one of these methods, the next thing you might want to do is use the sliders to make some adjustments to your key. Keep in mind that while we're making these adjustments, you can always come up and scrub through the clip or play back the clip at speed so that you can get an idea of exactly what the clip looks like. Sometimes keying on one particular frame may look fantastic, but then later on in the clip there might be one particular area where the lighting changed or the talent moved in such a way that it could create a problem with the key. So make sure and uh, look at a, a wide variety of your clip just to make sure that the key looks exactly the way you want it to look. Now the matte generation sliders are where you're going to want to start. Um, the interface is designed to kind of move from left to right across these different sliders. The matte generation sliders are what actually adjust the edging and actually set the key, and so they're the most important sliders that are listed here. The start threshold slider is used primarily when you have kind of a washed out green screen and you might be getting some noise in the green screen itself. If your green screen is heavily wrinkled, you might see some remnants of the wrinkles still showing up in your background. And so by adjusting the start threshold slider, you can take care of that. All of the sliders work in that moving the slider to the left turns off that particular feature. Moving the slider to the right adds more of that particular feature. 
And we'll show how that works a little bit more in just a moment. So the start threshold slider, once again, this is really designed to remove noise in the background. Um, too much of this slider, you'll start to remove your talent. So uh, usually you want to keep this fairly low, someplace on the left-hand side of the slider. The transparency slider adjusts the overall transparency of the clip. And usually you want to use the transparency and try and keep the transparency as high or to the right as possible without having transparency in your subject matter. The highlight slider actually controls any areas where you might have like bright reflections from lighting, um, any of the white areas in the image that might be keying out just a bit. The highlight slider, if you move it to the right, it will help keep those areas. If you move it to the left, it will allow those areas to be keyed out. But usually it's uh, very useful if you have like a bright spot, if you have um, glasses are another good example. If somebody's wearing glasses, you might have to turn up the highlight slider in order to keep the frame of the glasses um, if you're trying to key someone wearing glasses on a green screen. The shadow slider controls the darker parts of the image. If you want to keep the shadows, move the slider to the right. If you want to get rid of shadows, move the slider to the left. The sensitivity slider adjusts how sensitive the keyer is when you're changing from one color to another. Um, in other words, if your green screen has you know, really harsh shadows or changes on the green screen um, from one shade of green to another, the sensitivity slider will help correct for that. Um, it shows how sensitive the key is during a, a color change. The one time I use the sensitivity slider a lot is usually if I'm shooting footage on an analog source like a Betacam SP source. Um, oftentimes, if you're trying to key off of Beta SP, sometimes you'll see like this, uh, like a harsh line along an edge, and sometimes that line will actually get kind of a color artifact to it when you digitize the footage and bring it in. Um, the sensitivity slider can usually correct for that. Um, usually, I just bring the sensitivity slider as far to the right as possible, and that problem goes away. Now, the most important slider here in the matte generation is the alpha curve slider. And this actually adjusts the softness of the edging. Usually if you see a kind of a white line along the edge of your talent, that's because the alpha curve slider is not properly adjusted. The way I treat the alpha curve slider is usually I want to have this slider as far to the left as possible, but um, the way I adjust it is usually I move it all the way to the left and then start backing it back down again until I get acceptable edging within my talent. If you have flyaway hair, like this clip example that we have here, you'll notice that as I bring the alpha curve slider down too far, you start seeing kind of this gray, uh, I don't know what to call it, gunge um, noise in the image here. and this is an example of having the alpha curve slider a little bit too low. Usually I'll take a clip and scrub through it where I really, really can see this, and then I'll take the alpha curve slider and keep bringing it to the right until this disappears, but I'm not keying out too much of the hair itself. Same thing with edging. If you're getting kind of a white glow around your talent, that means you need to adjust the alpha curve slider. And the easiest way to do it is bring it all the way to the left and then back it off to the right until you've cleared up the problem. Once I've got the alpha curve slider, oftentimes I'll go back and take the transparency slider and maybe adjust it a little bit further just to see if I can get the, uh, the transparency a little bit higher, which again helps ensure that the edging is going to stay pretty clean.